Okay, I'm back with a new video and this is about the Sun Sphere meditation. Uh, we are going through the Tree of Words and there are seven days involved. The first six days are about a short meditation, 15, 20 minutes, and the self-initiation is on the seventh day. Um, I started with picking an oracle deck, some tarot cards and a Lenormand deck. That's the Moonlight Knight. That one is over there. And this is the card that I used when on the first day. It's the Sun card. It's almost the same, if not similar or the same as a Tarot Sun. It's about happiness and victory, success, power, warmth, truth. This is an extremely positive card in the Lenormand deck. The sun is the card of victory, happiness, success. As the giver of life, the sun shines a light onto the situation or a relationship. And it spreads light on other cards within a Lenormand spread. As the source of light, it brings happiness and hope to whatever is negative or depressing. It can also illuminate that which is hidden and bringing the truth. And I was so looking for the truth in the sun card because it seems to be a happy card, a successful card. Uh, an enlightening card, but there is definitely a dark side to the sun, um, the black sun, or whatever you want to call it. So I I'm going to put that one here. Um, I checked the oracle, the Celtic Druid oracle, and in Naos. The sun is related or connected to oak. Eik is Dutch for oak and Duur is Celtic in the Ogum al Om alphabet. Um, so here we have the sun and the description is almost the same or similar. It's the card of fertility and sexuality, the power of stability. It's an anchor. And it's determination, old wisdom, doors, boundaries, blocks. And again, there is a darker side to the oak, by the way, in the Netherlands. Um, this is not really a card of power or the oak is not a tree of power because it draws in lightning like a tower does or... It's very old farmers would place a or plant a oak next to their farm or a barn to make sure that when there was lightning, it would hit the oak tree instead of the barn or the house. So it's a deceiving card, it's distracting, it's redirecting. But it's still fertility and sexuality, power, stability. And there is a boundary in this card. Same with the Moonlight Night. There is a darker side to the sun. Um, however, this tree gives you practical insight, clarity. Um, the power to fix things and to end things. And it's... A desire about making things beautiful and to be creative. Uh, when you have this card reversed or you take the dark side of the sun card, the oak card, you might feel powerless and weakened. And you might want to ask others for help because you feel weaker than normal. And you need security and assistance and practical advice. Um, it's about being nervous, manic, fearful, anxious, tense. And you've lost the 
connection with the earth. It may be time to go to a general practitioner or therapist or a spiritual advisor. And there's a feeling that nothing really happens, that you're stuck, that you are limited in your growth, that you're stuck in comfortable routines and habits. So that's a negative side to the sun. Uh, the desperate need to find protection, I think, and safety, a haven, uh, all kinds of things that make life pleasant and easy. Um, that's also in the sun. Um, you can find this in... Let me put this one here. Um, you can find this happening in the sun card. And I was thinking about this. And I think when it comes to the desire to feel safe and secure and have shelter and a haven and a home, uh, you also are stuck in your body, in your mind even. And that's because there is a wall. Now, you don't find this in this card, in this deck. It's an easy explanation of what the sun card really means. It's about the sun ruling the days on earth and the passing of time. And it brings life and light and clarity. It represents abundance, good luck, understanding, consciousness. But the consciousness in the sun card as we know it is kind of limited. You know, it's there's more to the sun than... Meets the eye. It's about faith, faithfulness, agreements. It's the true love card. The lover's card isn't really a love card. Because there is a young man standing between two women. And he can't make up his mind. So that's not really a love card. I think that this, um, the sun is the real lover's card. But in a limited way. Um, let's say you are alone in this card. Um, then you are stuck inside your body without... You have the knowledge of there being a world outside these walls. But you are having fun. You feel joy. You feel safe. You feel happy within these closed borders. Within these walls. There is no desire to... Find a world beyond these boundaries, beyond these walls. So every time I dove into a meditation, I bumped into this wall. In the Rider Waite Smith, there is a wall. In the Tarot de Marseille, there is a wall. And it's not a high wall. It's not that you can cannot look what's, to see what's on the other side. You know, it's the refusal to go beyond borders and stay where you are, enjoy life, be happy, feel safe. Um, so it's the, you're restricting or blocking yourself from moving. It's the desire to stay put. Um, so in the Rider right Waite Smith, you have this baby on a horse. And every time I went through the gate, I opened the gate, I went through the gate, I was sitting on my horse and I definitely, absolutely, really wanted to turn around and see what was on the other side. Um, same with this Tarot de Marseille, I opened the gate, went through it, experienced the surroundings, environment, I experienced being with somebody else. And these cards do have something in common. I think that this boyish, babyish, childish uh, character is helping the other one, uh, guiding the other one. There is something that looks like a tail, 
So that's very primal, very immature, very um, starting, beginning, learning. Um, so they are sort of guiding each other and helping each other out. And in this card, in the Rider Waite Smith, one of these characters decided to move on alone, still behind those walls, when uh, one of those characters turned into a horse. So that's more a submissive type of, there's more a dominant and submissive type of energy going on. Here is more the energy of equals. However, one of them um, takes charge and is guiding the other one. I think these two characters take turns uh, at some point, you know, um, one is guiding the other and after a while the other is guiding this one. Um, but in this one, it's just one being in charge, taking control, guiding, uh, telling the other what to do. The horse in this case, there is victory, there's light, there is brightness. Um, especially the in this card, you can feel the cruel, grinding, piercing force of the sun ready to penetrate your skin and burn right through it. So whatever I did, I bumped into the wall. Not so much in this one. However, this one showed a darker side. Uh, that one showed a darker side. That one showed a darker side also. Let me put these here. And then we go to this card where these two characters are on an island. And... Uh, you can't really see it. You assume that there are, you might assume that there are other figures or pairs living inside those walls. But in this deck, you can see that they are living on an island and they are somewhat interested in each other and uh, maybe stuck with each other, not really choosing. They have made up their mind. They made a choice and now they are stuck together and um let me just check a little bit and i like this deck a lot it's the lorenzo tarot it's a beautiful deck a little bit crazy a little bit weird but still an awesome really awesome deck um it's warmth love construction but the negatives are not friendship but a lack of harmony uh pessimistic restlessness Communication difficulties, loneliness, misunderstandings, the desire to appear what you're not, I think, and assimilation of being happy. So you're actually not really happy. You're stuck there. You have to stay put. You can't move. You have to be happy. You're forced to be happy in that place. And this is that that place that you are forced in you practically or technically you could cross these borders but for some weird reason you're stuck and you choose to live inside them um, this is the vice versa tarot and here we have a more friendly relationship between the child and a horse than i think this one this horse looks a little bit sad and, you know, one is taking charge, one is dominating the other. And here is more a relationship between um, the two. But if you, it's a vice versa tarot. So one side shows the positive and the other side shows the uh, present negative. And here are the sunflowers and here we have that wall again so a wolf fortress stands at the border of the sun's child garden with armored guards standing sentinel the land beyond the wall is mountainous and challenging though beautiful and i think that this site is neglected because when I entered the gate, I had the weird urge to want to move, to keep moving forward and expand. 
not stick to plans, but be playful, creative. Um, so that's the wall again. So we have an island here. That's a place where you're stuck. We have the bright side, but a negative side. So you're still stuck. You're stuck. You're stuck behind a wall. Here you're stuck on an island. In these cards, you're stuck behind a wall. You're just, you know, uh, you are forced to stay where you are, be happy, enjoy life, and to forget that there is more to life. Now, the weird thing is that I felt the crazy need to see what was on the other side of the wall. And I went in meditation, I went through uh, the gate, and I could have focused on a lot of things. The horse, the child, the sun, of course, the sunflowers. Here are no flowers. But I decided to take a look and see what was on the other side of the wall. And there was a burning field of grain. Um, there was a burning sensation of fire, of endlessness, of an ongoing field of grain, grain, corn, grain, corn, grain. Um, these sunflowers were only there to, you know, block you from going over the wall or through the wall. Um, and I really wanted to check what was on the other side. It seemed hopeless. It feel, I felt like I was burning. My skin was burning. I couldn't handle the heat. I couldn't handle the fire. I couldn't handle the sun. And then I had this fantastic idea to go through the wall. Um, At first it went smooth, I went through the wall and I could stretch my arms to the other side. And behind this endless field of corn and grain, there was a dark, mysterious world with watery beings. Like it was an ocean or a sea or a lake that was extremely deep and extremely dark where Beings would touch my arms, reaching out to me, trying to pull me through the wall. Um, that was something that was both scary and inviting, but I didn't know what was waiting for me on the other side. So um, at some point I tried to force myself through the wall and I got trapped. I got trapped inside the wall. I could look over it, endless amount of yellow plant life, burning um buzzing killing uh i couldn't deal with that i went th through the wall i wanted to get through it to see what was underneath that bliss uh golden bliss fiery bliss and there was deep dark blackness with beings um i noticed something else that when i wanted to touch the other side i was able to move my hand and arm through it like the wall had become fluid but when i wanted to enter the wall and go through it i got trapped if you've seen cave diving or cave survival videos then you automatically become quite claustrophobic and that's what it felt it was like the wall was closing in of me uh, it was like i was being buried inside that wall as if that wall was going to eat me so it took me a while to be to relax myself to calm myself down and wait Till the right moment came for me to go through the wall. It was a question. Uh, it was a matter of timing. Um, if I were one of those childlike figures, characters, and I touched the wall and it was brick 
hard rock solid, then I had to break my way through it. But if I give it some time, the wall became fluid and I was able to move through it like a squid or a fish or some kind of sea monster and waiting for the right time to go through the wall was of importance because if I wanted to go through it when the, uh, the wall was still brick solid then I would get trapped and I had to really break my way through it with a lot of energy, a lot of force while I was patient enough to wait a little while and give it some time, the wall automatically became fluid again and then I go, I could swim through it or flow through it in a fluid type of way. Uh, what was on the other side is not completely clear. I could feel it. I could feel scales sliding along my legs and arms. I could feel slimy stuff on my face and chest. I could feel some kind of tentacles uh, uh, on my belly or my toes or fingers and my neck and it was like they on the other side didn't expect me to find a way through um, they I think expected that I would go over it and end up in those endless green uh, gold grain fields I don't think they had expected me to find a way a world underneath all that sunlight, that brightness, um, that bliss. So instead I did find the hard way and the easy way to go through the wall, but I couldn't see anything, I couldn't hear anything, I was able to touch, um, it was thick, it was not water, it was um, bright starlight and thick fluid at the same time, more oily or soapy type of um, stuff. Um, so unfortunately the seven days are over, six days of meditation and the seventh day of the self-initiation because I found out a way through the wall a little late in the sequence and I, I can of course try a couple of more times and see what's going on but maybe that is not the main thing to see or feel or hear what's on the other side maybe it was just the experience that it was able to go through it and um, be aware of the fact that there is a whole world out there behind that wall and in that wall and that the wall isn't a wall, but a biological creation, a spiritual creation, a being. Maybe it represents the auric field and a boundary between the causal and acausal um, that wouldn't really surprise me. But uh, for now, um, this is it. See you next time. Bye.